Good morning. morning. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. It's October 16th? 17th. 17th? Mm -hmm. We had our first frost a week ago. Uh, and as you can see, uh, Miss Canthus is turning color already. We had a pretty good freeze this morning that's going to ice it. It's going to turn brown really fast. Uh, today's video is literally uh, to show growth expectations of Miss Canthus giganteus on first year, second year, and third year growth. Uh, as you see behind us, full growth. Uh, by the way, this is a fifth year uh, growth. Um, uh, other than that, I just took out Delaney today to help wander around the farm to explain those things. And we're off to the next location for first year growth. Happy to be here. We, we harvested the rhizomes out of this field in uh, April, early April, and then replanted the field around May 1st. This is typical first year growth from individual rhizomes. This is a field planting. This is not hedgerows like people are doing for privacy screening but, but or deer habitat, but we're doing field planting for rhizome production. Um, uh, we had a great year. We had timely rain. Uh, sometimes we never see tassels. Most of the time we get three, four feet to get five or six feet. Very happy with it for first year growth. Normally this yeah, it's shorter. I see you've got some yeah. leafage still coming out of the tassel. Yeah, but now is that, that the first frost just hit, it's frozen in time. It's exactly. going to turn brown. The growth has stopped. Uh, the first frost kicked the plant into sequentians, which is pulling nutrient in reverse for the next two weeks. So come spring, there's explosive growth to regrow from nothing because everything above ground is going to die. This will all regrow from nothing again. Now we're going to head on over to second year growth. Sounds good. Uh, we made it over to the second year growth. And, and you had a really good question, Delaney, about why the tassels are partial and those are really open. Um, the, the reason is the miscanthus kind of finishes at different stages as, as it ages out at the end of the season. Some mature a hair earlier, some are still finishing and that's according to nutrient and water in the ground and uh, how the frost is spotty when the first frost came five days ago and it was very spotty so some of the plants are still having an opportunity to grow a little bit more and others have finished in the gotcha. uh, it's timing so on the second year growth we have more stalks uh, obviously and a little taller as it should be. Um, the third year growth where we're headed next will finally show uh, the potential and you'll see more of the previous year's stalks uh, hidden in the growth like this one. That's from first year growth. Um, you'll see a lot more dead stalk accumulation to make it look thicker the next winter. Right. So we'll head over to that next. Sounds good. Sure. We're over at our third year growth field. Uh, we, we literally dug this three years ago. This is full three seasons of growing. Um, on our field planting, we have corridors every 60 feet for irrigation. Uh, so if we do have issues with rainfall, we can get the hose reel down those rows. The gun shoots 120 feet so we can hit, or 60 feet so we can hit 120 feet or two off a pathway two right. sections two panels. often it's the wind is blowing and you only do one section because of wind issues so you, you have to have rows every 60 feet right right up here is one of our corridors which has really closed in uh, but we're not having to irrigate mature crops right. so this is your typical full growth eight to ten feet uh, and a lot thicker and you can more easily see the amount of dead stock from the previous uh, two years right. that make it look thicker again during the winter um, the dead stalks by the way will stand for four to five years before they rot at ground level and tilt 
and then the whole mesh should be cleaned up every five years, maybe six year rotation. We've let a hedgerow go to 10 years and huge masses of dead stock fell out of it at the 10th year. So just too much biomass. Um, this campus does have to be cleaned up every five or six years, you have to. <laughs> we, we've uh, come into our bunker where we store the chopped biomass. Um, Soft? Yeah, it's, it's kind of prickly. Uh, it, the soakability is incredible. So it works great for chickens, poultry, and horses, but for cattle, um, it's too prickly for them to lay in. Right. Shavings, uh, straw works better, but. Does this so, work for warmth too? Uh, pelletizing it or making briquettes is where we're headed with the biomass. Uh, we're gonna head out to the field where we uh, started the video. We were standing in front of fifth year growth and, and I'll show you, we cut down that field this past February and show you what it looks like one year's growth of fifth year old stocks. So what we see is we truly are getting a ton of dry biomass per acre on a mature field. Um, kind of stunning. Where we're standing in front of maybe about 70 tons from a couple of years of cutting the biomass out of the way so we can get at the rhizomes. Um, we are gonna be heading to briquettes, we believe, logs for our own fireplaces for heat. Um, we've tried pellets. Uh, pellets work fine, but there's a lot more infrastructure necessary, a lot more dust control. Right. So this is less expensive to make bricks. Right. So we're gonna go with that. So next location. We are back where we started because I forgot to mention that this whole block we cut down on frozen ground in February with our, our chopper, which we'll, we'll take a look at next. Um, we thought we would have to dig it up for rhizomes, so we cut all the biomass out of the way and put it in the barn. This is one year of five-year-old growth, but that's what people have a hard time understanding. This is what it can do in one year. Uh, it's amazing on, 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 on the growth potential. Right next to it is the same five year old plant, but we did not cut down all of the biomass. It's still in here. So we literally can store the tonnage before the they start to tilt or, or rot at ground level. We literally can store the tonnage in the field before putting it in the barn. So we will take this next year or February. Right. So what you're seeing is literally four months of growth. That's from, crazy. Uh, starts pushing the first week in April. So April, May, June, July, August, five months of growth for uh, Harmer's Catfish Gigantius. So. Thanks for coming out today. So, I appreciate you so having me. I had a good time. Around, and uh, we will catch up with everybody later. Sounds good. Thank you.